And now I have the pure joy of introducing our incredible speaker, John Wilson. I first want to say he's a friend to many, a mentor to many, a teacher to many, a fellow sojourner to many, and he has a great sense of humor, compassion, and a large heart. And he shares with us so beautifully and willingly. More often, he is known as the captain of compost. <laughs> The Minister of Microbes, the Solicitor of the Sun, a Teacher of Transformation. I give you Farmer John. Oh, it's good to be here. It's good to see you all. I'm glad you're here. I'm feeling like the labby, your daughter, where is she? Your daughter. We did a little group hug over there, and I mean, she pulled us into the group hug, and then she's like, <laughs> okay, this is the way it is here, okay. So I did it too. We were over there jumping up and down. And so, uh, yeah, it's really good to see y'all. And, um, and I, I, have a, I have a new mantra, if you will, when people say, how you doing? I say, well, this is the best day of my life, right here, and take some people by surprise, and other people like, yeah, I get it, okay, you know, and uh, I say it every day now, it's the best day of my life, and uh, sometimes I don't feel it, but I'm, I say it two or three times when I don't feel it, <laughs> <laughs> and, then I, and then I try to do the thing like uh, Eckhart Tolle, where, you know, he, he says, well, if you're really feeling horrible, you sit there, and you okay. I feel really horrible. That's not so bad, is it? <laughs> Just go with it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Abby is also one of my little garden students. Uh, I have eight for eight years done. Sad that they didn't do it this year. I don't know why, but eight years we've done a garden at Cook right over there, Cook Elementary, and I go. I've gone over every spring and every fall and brought plants and compost and. They either had a, it was either through a class or a garden club, and that was so much fun. And, and I always remembered her. I didn't know y'all came to the fellowship, but I always remember her being always bright and like looking around. And so, all right. So let's see. I don't have page one up. Let's see. I could just start in the middle. You probably are. Okay. Here we go. And uh, everything that you're going to hear today is, I'm going to hand this out later. It's all here. Yeah. So it's all right there. You, you can read it. I know you can. Okay. <laughs> now you're going to have an exercise later I mean, uh, to take home. Um, well, it was, a, it was a quiet week at Newark Farm. Uh, any Garrison Keeler fans in here? <laughs> It was a quiet week at New Earth Farm. Uh, the weather was pretty nearly perfect. Not just this past week, but for several weeks. And uh, I guess I better use my glasses. I, I actually think we needed this nor'easter. Uh, too many days of beautiful weather in a row are, are, are not great for some, some of us Midwesterners. <laughs> I mean, we gotta have a little something to toil against every now and then to feel normal. <laughs> um, we did get a lot done though in all this weather. We planted strawberries and uh, to try to be uh, environmentally friendly. I, um, you know, everybody grows them on plastic. It's harder not to grow them on plastic. But we're not, we're going to forego the plastic. When I threw away all those rolls of plastic at the end of last year, I was like, oh, I don't want to keep doing this. Uh, but we we got them in, and that was fun. We planted garlic, leeks, parsley, all things that you know go through the winter, and then harvest in the spring. You're, you're thinking ahead as a farmer. There's no like get my paycheck this week and do my work or whatever. It's a lot, and not just this fall to spring, but you know we're planting trees. I, we just saw a TV show. Cork trees in Portugal take 40 years before somebody harvests them. Over there they say, 
uh, you're planting when you plant trees. You're planting for your grandchildren, and that's a that's a good way of thinking. Uh, and we also planted in a greenhouse, unheated, one layer of plastic. Uh, it's you go one and a half growing zones south with those. So now we'll be able to harvest all through the winter. We planted in there lettuce, collards, arugula, tatsoi, and kale. And uh, that was fun. We also, some of you know, met Matt Gibson Thursday. We have our favorite Haitian farmer with us here. He's an ag student in Haiti. And um, Gibson Catalis. Uh, he spends about a month with us to learn from us and he goes to a couple of other farms and he also uh, is here to collect seeds. We, we are easily able to find him heirloom seeds and also to raise some money. And a dollar raised here going back to Haiti is like times 10 value. And I really want to thank you all for uh, who was here Thursday. That was that. He was Me too. <laughs> well, having gotten to know him, he is so moved by what happened here. So thank you all. And I'm a Pisces, it's always close. <laughs> um, and he is here to learn from us and some other organic farmers, but he's, uh, he's also a teacher. We were, he and I were sitting in that beautiful weather last Sunday in um, two Adirondack chairs in the sun at the farm near the flowers. Mark Sheen had made the chairs, which was nice. And uh, we were talking about things spiritual and religious and, uh, and talking about various religions, and he says, well, they're all one God, you know. And I said, yeah, right. And then he said, and people pray so much, but when I pray, I pray in gratitude for what I have. Of course, you know, coming from a man who lives in a nation of poverty. He was definitely my teacher that day. Not praying for what you want, but what grateful for what you have. So that was nice. We also have a public health intern from ODU with us at the farm uh, learning about what a real food system can look like. It's, for me, very rewarding and gratifying that young people are really starting to get into this stuff. It seems like it's been such a slow haul to get people into things that are healthy and good for the environment. There's some other young people at the farm who learned this week what the uh, meaning of our farm name is. Now you hear the word New Earth Farm, you think, okay, feel good, healthy food, sort of maybe 60s sort of feeling to it, <laughs> New Earth Farm. In fact, the two meanings of it are for, that I set in motion at the beginning. Uh, one is New Earth. We're building New Earth constantly. Now it's all contained in the ecos. I mean, within the uh, you know the atmosphere down. It's all the same stuff, but we're rebuilding what has been lost. New soil, making compost, adding stuff. We're we're literally building new earth. And of course, the other one, you, some of you may have already guessed, is uh, there's a Bible quote: "There will be a new heaven and a new earth." Uh, and so. I like that idea that there will be, and I've actually visited a sort of a new earth once in a dream that was like, oh, this is what it's supposed to be like. Oh, everything was you know, perfect and beautiful. Um, and that new heaven and new earth, it's coming. Don't worry, it's coming. And right here, it's being built as well. It's not something to just wait on. We, of course, you know, my meditation is, I've, I know I've said some of these before, I wait a long time between talks so you forget the things I've already said. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you're not like me, I forget things. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the idea at the Pentecost, 
to go and wait, wait upon the Lord, you know, just to wait. So that's my meditation. So we, there is a waiting part, there's also a building part. So, and raising consciousness is maybe the most important part. I also believe, as being a farmer, in building the, in the soil, all of it. But it's being built right here, right now, with all of this good feeling in here. And contained in what I've just said is pretty much the essence of my talk. Be grateful, be a creator, and hold a vision. Okay, so. So you can go now if you want that. <laughs> um. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Kathleen brings me YA books from the library. She's a librarian. And she and sometimes they're for me to trial for some of her groups, and sometimes because she knows I like weird and interesting YA. But some of the best writers are YA writers. That's young adult. So I don't read adult novels and stuff. I mean they I mean it's a good sedative though. I do keep one by the bed if I'm a little sleepless. Those long, heavy novels. None of y'all have ever fallen asleep reading, have you? <laughs> um, <laughs> and this was a line that jumped out at Kathleen, actually, when I was starting to think about uh, this talk. But things can come together in strange ways. The woods were at the center. The hub of the wheel. All wheels must have a hub. A Ferris wheel has one. As the sun is the hub of the wheeling calendar, fixed points they are and best left undisturbed. For without them, nothing holds together. Sometimes people find this out too late. So, the hub is the center of the wheel. For me on the farm, that's easy. The center, the hub. What, what's the center? Building the soil. Build the soil, just you're feeding the soil, the plants take care of themselves. The idea of feeding the plant, that's secondary. You feed the soil, make the soil. The soil does all the work. From someone a few of us know about, Alan Chadwick. In the garden, as in life, you must give more than you expect to receive. And she will reward you beyond your ability to comprehend. So that's the way we try to build the soil. Now sometimes in my life it's been harder to identify the hub, the center. Uh, but I chose one of the two things to put as my center for this talk. And one is to have positive, clear intentions. I keep coming around to intentions. I read about it all the time. I read this book or that book, Intentions, Intentions. I had one of our old friends tell me about it in a dream once. Intentions are the most important. That's what's seen from the other side, I was told. So in any of these things, I'm, I, and I have to remind myself all the time, and in fact, one reason I'm doing this talk is they say, you teach what you most need to learn. So I'm you're witness to a conversation with myself here. <laughs> Reminding myself about intention. Um, and I identified 12 spokes. And they're, you know, they're not little standalone spokes, really. Everything is so fluid in this way. But the first one is service to others. I read that somewhere as well. Service to self, service to others. Of course, sometimes we do need to take care of ourselves. It's not to wear ourselves out with doing for others, but service to others. You know, what, and think about your intention. Again, always, what's, your, what's my intention here? Um, interconnectedness. We're all related to everything else. Those butterfly chrysalis that are going to, you know, they say a a beat of a butterfly wing can affect the weather on the other side of the planet. So, in my everyday, my, of course, you know, these are ideals. I have plenty of unconscious moments. Uh, 
And then I wait, you know, wake up. Yes. Ten minutes later, what was I thinking? What was I doing? So these are goals, like to have that clear intention and the interconnectedness. I mean, what I do on my farm affects every one of you, whether you eat the food or not. <laughs> And, and what you do in your lives affects me, whether I know anything about you. And so we're all interconnected. And on that note, we at New Earth Farm are very much about collaboration. We have a collaboration with the Beekeepers Guild to teach courses there. We have cooking classes. We invite other farmers to bring food to the cooking classes. We're you know, trying to collaborate with everybody and, and, and open source also which means I'm not hiding secrets that I think are going to make me better than you or make more money on my pharma. We're open source. What we do is available for you to see and know. Um, and uh, the third one is there's more to life than meets the eye. Now, this is a group, you know, I don't have to say some of these things, you know, like there's other dimensions, there's other, I mean, we can't see it. Some, maybe some of you in here can see all the energy. Has anybody seen the wood, the, the what's it called, wood block? Uh, it's a type of art. You etch on, what's it called? Etch on wood and stamp it. Of Ezekiel's vision. Has anybody seen that? It, it, and then someone, it, and then colored it in. Ezekiel's vi vision is also, I'm bringing up because, you know, the hub, the wheel, the whole thing. That was the wheel in the wheel that there's a song about. Well, when he saw through the veil, there were, just, there were wheels of energy and there, there was color and activity. It's not what we think of as this you know, empty space. And so there's a lot of dimension all the time, everywhere. We see in the, all the spectrum of, you know, the electromagnetic spectrum, we see a small part are, vi are visible uh, to us in our eyes. And to me, it's been really helpful to know that and have a few experiences along the way that were like, wow, this, you know, there's a lot more going on than I knew. They taught me in you know, grade school in Indiana. Um, and along with that goes, we have help. Always we have help. And sometimes it's from you or you or you know, some, from each other. And maybe that's even the most important. I don't know, but I, you know, we've—I'm sure many of you have had experiences of having help that you couldn't explain. I mean, I—I I know just getting out of high school, I had to have a, a guardian angel, just <laughs> sur surviving some of that. <laughs> Your and, what's that? Your yeah, and, and yeah. Oh, by the way, my this is my mother. She has decided to live here in Yay. Virginia Beach. Uh, she's gonna do her last laps around the sun here in Virginia Beach. <laughs> um, she grew up in landlocked Indiana, always had a thing about the ocean, so now she's looking at the ocean every day. She's in the condo down at the ocean. Um, but we have help. I, you know, I, I fell out of a tree once, I, 20 feet, and I landed, I mean, I completely passed out. I don't know what, I can't remember anything except I was in the tree and then I'm laying on the ground. Now, in the meantime, I must have been floated over a few feet because there was only one safe place to land. And I landed in it. And uh, there were rocks and debris all around me. I didn't hit anything. I just opened my eyes and, I mean, not, not a thing, not a scratch, nothing, 20 feet. That was help. <laughs> we have help. And there's lots of other, I think, may, well, maybe not, but maybe more meaningful help in the little ways. Maybe thoughts come to us, somebody's praying for us, and we go, oh, hmm, and then we make some change. And I think another uh, really important spoke for me, especially, and I think for everybody, is this whole thing that's coming so big now, the near-death experiences. I think they're a real catalyst for the whole world. Uh, books are written all the time. Talks are going all over the place. Lots of people have had them and don't even talk about them. But then they're somewhere in their life be quietly talking about it to their neighbors. And, you know, there was a kind of a big, almost explosive consciousness changing happening in the 60s and early 70s. 
I think this is the one for right now. The near-death experiences are really having an effect on a lot of people. And for sure myself, I heard Dr. Ritchie speak many years ago. And I think about that talk all the time, ever since then. What he said, what he saw, what he experienced, and the, especially the, his meeting with Jesus about he's going through his life and you know this and that, and Jesus was just, okay, you know, it's all right. <laughs> it's all okay. It's all forgiven. It's all, you know, this is just for you to go through this process. I, I don't, I'm not too worried about what you've done. Uh, so that, that ch stayed with me. Um, another one I think is important, relationships over material gain. People in this room I know about that too. You know, it's, uh, we have the big disparity increasing with wealth because there are people in control who care more about material gain and relationships. So everybody going to help Robert, that's relationships over whatever you were going to do when, when you instead took him food. And um, it can be over not just material gain, but um, you know, relationships over uh, texting, <laughs> over Facebooking constantly, over him. Hey, there's a person in front of you. Hi, I'm here. Oh, okay. There are no, there are no young people here, so it's not as significant here. But I don't know about you, but I'm on the other side of that great divide. Technology still kind of. I mean, I, you know, I can send an email and I can do Facebook, but um, now for me personally, and it, you know, you may have your. By the way, that's why I have this. You, you can take this empty paper home. We have some printed. Write in, think about it. What's your center and what are your hubs? Yours may be completely different than mine. Set number seven here I think is very important for the transformation of the planet, for what's needed now. And compared to, say, mindlessly listening or following some script that someone gave you somewhere religiously or whatever. Seeking direct personal transformative spiritual experiences. So you're now writing the book in, of your soul. To me that's really a significant one and, ha and they all connect back to the intention. intention. Most people who do that seek out that kind of transformational experience in life, it is for service to others. They become healers. They become teachers. Um, but that's the real teacher. The real teacher is when you go inside and do the inner light consciousness training or go to a meditation group. Um, meditate by yourself. It's all building something. and. Some of the things, um, I mean, you're building something all the time. That's why I said, you know, be grateful, be a creator, be a creator. You're always creating, so you're already a creator. What your intention is focused on is what you're creating. And so being mindful of what it is you want to create. And yeah, they're, they're mixed in together. Some of these are, I had a hard time differentiating one line from another. What's the intention? What's the, because my intention, I could have put transformative spiritual experiences in the middle. That's the most important thing for me. Of course, I'm a farmer, I'm an organic farmer. So I believe food and nutrition and caring for the body in the most healthy way is very important. Um, and I'm sure if, if you have good memories, you'll. I may. I've probably said this in here before too. But one of the things that started the biodynamic uh, agriculture movement was a statement by Rudolf Steiner when asked by his students, "Why aren't we progressing? We're doing everything you say, Herr Steiner." And he said, "Well, the food you're eating does not support your spiritual ambition." Yeah. And. 
And now I'm an omnivore. To me, that does not mean vegan or vegetarian. I'm an omnivore. I eat it all. I choose carefully which things I eat, no matter what it is, the source of it. And I try to make the food I grow to be that high vibration of food as well. Um, so I think that's important. And there are those, and I don't want to sound off here, but you know, just to say, you know, pray over it, it's fine. Well, that is true. And I believe in that. But it's also true that you're building a world that you want by how you spend your money as well as how you think your thoughts, as well as how you spend your meditation time or whether you go to some group or the other. And there's also the intellectual nutrition. You, you know, that's good books. Books that are going to lift you. Spiritual food. I think it's really important to keep some spiritual food coming in. And what is my intention? Now right now I've been reading some books by a man named Hank Wesselman who wrote Medicine Maker, Vision Seeker and one other. And they've really been good for me. I've really enjoyed them and it's about transform transformations. He was a, he is an archaeologist and had spontaneous altered state experiences like whoa. That wasn't in my uh, science book, you know. <laughs> so he started having these experiences and then followed through with it and kept going and became quite a, uh, I mean, he's a teacher and a workshop leader and still an archaeologist, but they, I, I recommend those. Of course, you know, with books, you got to feel guided to what you want to read, but I really like those books. So for me lately, that's been my spiritual food, reading those books. Of course, along with farming, one of my spokes, it's just a general feeling of caring for the earth. We may have a new heaven and a new earth. I still think we should take care of this one. <laughs> and I think it's really important that we do whatever we know how to do and whatever is in our capacity to do. You know, there's, no ever re there's never a reason to feel guilty about anything, what you're eating or what you're doing, or whether you throw away some recyclables. If it's just not possible, okay, bless it, but planting trees, all, all of the above, caring for the earth. I think a really important one in this time is also uh, supporting the feminine, whether it's the inner feminine and whatever that means and how you deal with that, but also equal pay. I mean, bring it, you know, I'm a farmer, I was like, okay. Like, make it real here, but make it real here, make it real there. Equal pay, equal, you know, respecting women and girls in our culture today in all kinds of ways. I'm not, I mean, I, there's people that know more about this than me, but sometimes I'm not sure we've made a lot of progress yet in some of those ways. So I think that's important. And the last hub I put in my wheel is building community. Um, you know, where two or more are gathered. And there are more than two. In fact, there's more than 40 here. Back to the, uh, we have help and there's more. After I first heard Dr. Ritchie, and he said, oh, there's always at least one guardian with everybody all the time, one angel. And sometimes three or four or more. And, and I was always, you know, <laughs> I was a, for like almost a week, I was always thinking about it and looking over people's shoulders and over my shoulder. And, All right, where are they? And uh, that's, that's comforting to me. We're not alone. We have help. They're all around. But they need us, too, I've discovered. They need us to be a bridge. And that's part of what's in these books I'm reading about, being a bridge for the energy to come and go and being, building a community where it's known that on Sundays, even though, you know, according to a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, time is an illusion, lunchtime doubly so, but um, they know about our time. So they know every Sunday they can come here and, you know, it, it helps the whole thing, building community 
in those spiritual ways, but also in a, at the farm around healthy food, around teachings at the church. Building community is very important. And um, so here's here's uh, here's your homework. I told you the talk was contained on here. I mean, you can just write on the back of it later if you want. And forget about it. But uh, you know, I found it really helpful to think about the hub and my spokes while preparing for this talk. And we do have some printed pieces here. Um, and so this this will be for you to do if you wish and just revisit. I mean. It always, I find it helpful to constantly revisit. And the spiritual food, you know, have another spiritual meal, have another, see a good movie here. Even just staring at good art here. Uh, whatever it is to keep building yourself up and building each other up. I think these are the important things. And so that is, so what do you think that? Yeah, right now. Okay. They 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 want to read what I what I wrote. Um, just hand little bits of them out, maybe. So yeah, the idea here is thinking about your center, the hub of your wheel, and what the spokes might be on it, how they overlap, how they interact. So this bit is out of a Deepak Chopra book, um, Reinventing the Body, Resurrecting the Soul. So this is a story he tells of being at a talk where a guru is speaking. And somebody in the audience is obviously not like really interested in it. And the guru says something about the divine plan is unfolding even now. Transformation is occurring even now. And this guy finally got up and said, uh, is the divine plan unfolding now? The world looks so chaotic and violent. Few and fewer and fewer people believe in God. Without hesitation, the guru said, belief in God doesn't matter. The plan is eternal. It will always unfold. It can't be stopped. I like that. I, mean, I get a little caught up sometimes in the wars and stuff too. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? You know. Uh, and then, with a sweep of his arm, he said, "Everyone here should join in. There's no higher purpose in life. And if you join now, you will reap the first rewards. What if I don't join? What happens then?" Well, the divine plan doesn't need you to unfold. But if you turn away, it just won't unfold through you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I just, I don't know, I like that, knowing that there are... I'm, I am going to end, though, with one thing that I got from Hank Wesselman. They, the noetic, what's it called? The, uh, noetic. 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 There's a group on the West Coast. Yeah. Okay, so they did an extensive polling, uh, thinking they were a little group of people who were off the beaten track. But it turned out that in one way or another, there's something like that. According to them, 40 million to 50 million people who are in this transformational way of thinking and have read about near death and believe in the more than and believe in intention and and love and I just thought wow that is great and uh, some of them and then Hank Wesselman the guy I read did a workshop and everybody in the room was like oh my gosh I'm so glad 
be here. You know, I thought I was, the, I was a nutcase and the only person in the world. And so you never know who you meet might need to hear your story and they can come out of their uh, shell of, of that. And there's a lot of us now. There's a lot of us now. It's not just the fellowship and the ARE and the noetic sciences. And so we're building it right here and right now and keep up the good work. <laughs>